In this video, we will look at how to prepare your models before importing them into Substance 3D Painter. You should already have a base understanding of modelling and UV unwrapping. If you want to catch up on that, you can watch this video first. When working in Painter, you split your models into various parts to make the texturing process easier. You can split your model using texture sets, geometry masks, and ID maps. Let's learn what these are and how to use them. When you import a model, Painter automatically splits the model into texture sets based on the materials originally assigned to the model in your previous 3D program. The name of a material becomes the name of a texture set. Texture sets are the main way to organize your model in Painter. Each texture set has its own stack of layers and exports its own set of bitmaps. Think of them as multiple layered documents inside your Painter file. Texture sets need to work together with your UV layout. Because each texture set is an individual layout, your UV map should be packed for each texture set. That means efficiently grouping the UV layouts per texture set to get the most out of your UV space. You can then mask and split materials within your texture sets by using either geometry masks or an ID map. Geometry masking relies on subgeometry in your model. Keeping your model split in individual parts lets you use those parts as masks. You activate the geometry mask for a layer, then simply check or uncheck subobjects from the list. Alternatively, you can use an ID map. ID maps are baked textures that contain data to make assigning materials easier. When your model has an ID map, you hold down control while dragging materials onto your object. This automatically assigns the material to a specific section of your model. You can create these maps in a few different ways, such as assigning vertex color data in your 3D application, or by baking maps using a second high poly mesh with different material colors for each ID section. Each method requires a different setup when baking your ID map. Models don't need a full UV unwrap to successfully import into Painter. Painter has a handy auto UV unwrap feature to do this for you. Painter's auto UV tools do up to three steps. Cut UV seams. Unfold and flatten your cut UV islands and pack the flattened islands into an efficient layout. Each step can keep the existing UV data you made beforehand in your 3D application. For example, this mesh originally had all UVs stacked on one single layout, but after splitting it into separate texture sets, we can let Painter repack the UVs for us, so that we are using our separate UV tiles more efficiently. Now let's try this out in Maya. For this part, we will assume that we have already retopologized our model, if needed, and done a first pass at our UV unwrapping of it. To assign different texture sets for Painter, you need to assign different materials to your model inside Maya. Some people like to use the hypershade to set up their materials, but personally I like to do it just by right-clicking my selection and clicking Assign New Material and then editing it in the Attribute Editor. Both get you the same result. It's best to assign one material to an object, but it's not required. Make sure to name your materials properly to keep things organised as this will become the name of your texture set in Painter. The type of material doesn't matter, so I usually just stick a Lambert on but it's a good idea to give them different colors, just so you can easily tell your texture sets apart inside of Maya. After assignment, you need to just make sure your UVs are packed per texture set. If you want to do this inside Maya, you can of course pack your shells manually, but the easiest way to do this is to firstly open up your UV editor and UV toolkit. Then select all objects from a texture set. You can select this manually, or you can find the material either at the top of the hypershade 
or by toggling assigned materials in the display settings of the outliner, right click and go to select objects with material. You should then see your UV shells in the UV editor. Click and drag to select them all and then come down to the arrange and layout tab in the UV toolkit and select layout. What I would also advise to do is give your shell some padding so that when it comes to matte baking, we don't get any errors. This means just giving your shells a couple of pixels of space between each other and the tile edges. We can do this by shift and left clicking on the layout button to open the functions options. From here in the layout settings tab, we can add a couple of pixels of padding to both our shells and our tile. You can also skip the packing in Maya entirely and have Painter do it automatically for you. Just export right after material assignment and toggle the auto unwrap option in the new project dialog. Open the options and depending on if you've already cut your seams and unfolded, you can tell Painter to regenerate all the packing. This is done per texture set and gives you a good layout to start texturing with. There's a couple of different ways to add ID maps to your model in Painter. The easiest way is by using vertex color. We can split sections that we think might have different textures within a texture set by first selecting our sections, for example, the wheels, and coming to mesh display and clicking the apply color option box. This will bring up a tool for assigning vertex color that we can keep open as we go on. I simply select the color and click apply. Again, the actual color of it doesn't matter as long as all the colors are different. Important to note that assigning vertex color is not the same as assigning a new material. By default, Maya will display your object with vertex colors in the viewport. But if we look in our attribute editor, we will see that the texture set material is still assigned. You can toggle display colors attribute on and off in the mesh display menu. Once in Painter, you can see my handy texture sets are here. We then go into the Bake Maps dialog and select the ID selection. Make sure to set the ID map color source to vertex color. Click Bake Selected Textures. Now we can see by holding down control and clicking and dragging material onto our model, Painter shows us different sections we can apply within our texture set using the ID maps we've created using vertex colors. Super easy. To use geometry masking in Painter, just split your model into multiple objects. If you already have a lot of separate objects, you can skip this step. If your mesh consists of only one or two parts, right click and hold to go to your face selection mode. Select your faces that you want to extract and then click the extract button to split them into new objects. It's a good idea to delete history after this and name your objects properly just to make them easier for you to navigate inside Painter. Geometry masking then allows you to mask based on the separate objects that you created in Maya. Simply click objects to toggle inclusion or use the drop down for shortcuts to include or exclude all objects. And that was a quick rundown of how to prepare your model for Painter using Maya.